What's going on traders? Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is November 29th, 2021. Please go ahead, click the like button on the video, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss any of my future videos. Today we're going to talk about the crazy carnage in the markets. We're going to, the, we're going to go through the volatility of the market and really put everything in perspective. Before we do that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. Last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account to any one of my trades. All right, let's dive in. So indices. Oh my gosh, this was an insane washout today. So we talked about this on yesterday's video that, hey, the VIX is still above a 25. So under that environment, you know, the market is still vulnerable to significant volatility. And we saw that rear its ugly head today so box scores we have the s p 500 is measured by the spy closing down 1.95 percent we have the nasdaq qqq finishing down 1.47 percent iwm small caps were our worst performer on the day down 2.04 percent and the dow jones was down 1.79 percent volatility on all of these indices is very elevated and we're going to take a look at the vix the vvix all that stuff in detail and then the bread this was an absolute month end washout we only had two percent advancers in the spy and oddly enough the best breadth was in the small caps and i actually think that's a hidden bullish divergence because really what that means is the small caps you know perhaps they've gotten the worst of this sell-off the small caps have just been so bad on a relative basis compared to these other indices. And now the weakness, you know, really hit the mega caps, you know, all those kinds of names. So let's take a look at just how bad this breadth was. So we had uh, a sea of red. Look at this. Only a few beacons of light in a sea of darkness. We had Apple up 3.16%. I actually took a position in Apple today. We had Tesla up 0.68%, barely positive. And we had Pfizer up 2.54%. Pretty much everything else, though, was blood red. Oddly enough, though, crypto was positive. So take a look at this. I also think this is a, a bit of a hidden bullish divergence that we are seeing Bitcoin. You know, it's not like it's having a stellar day or anything, but I think what's crazy is so when we have that Thanksgiving, you know, huge uh, downside spill, I believe that was the 26th, Bitcoin really cascaded lower and so did Ethereum. And then when we got the bounce, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum bounced, the crypto market bounced. Now, as we're getting this second wave down in the, you know, regular headline indices and equities, Bitcoin and crypto in general, they're not really following to the downside, which I think is a bullish divergence because these cryptos have been a leader so for instance bitcoin you know fell from its all-time high well before the equity market and even here you know bitcoin broke out of the lows well before the equity market as well so it's led you know to the upside and the downside the fact that we're not cascading here i think that's a good thing you know if that changes and that's like oh my gosh you know this is really bad everyone's just reaching for liquidity wherever they can get it and ethereum Look at this Ethereum. It's like what bear market? What's going on? What volatility? Trading at forty-seven eleven now, of five point nine nine percent. It's literally on the verge of making a new all-time high. So this is a very interesting divergence that we're seeing at a time when equity markets, you know, just look absolutely horrible. So let's take a look at some of these headline indices, and then we'll go into the hood. We'll take a look at the sectors and style factors. So we have S&P 500 in the after hours market because it's our late night edition. I was on a Twitter spaces earlier and really just trying to digest everything that happened today. Um, in the after hours, we're up 0.27%. But you can see, you know, this is a really bad technical pattern. Uh, my trend model is actually at a negative three. So yeah, not in a positive trend or below these key moving averages. And look at this. So this was November's monthly value area. Now we've actually flipped. Now the December value area has lit up and we are going to be opening up tomorrow well below this monthly value area. So we'll have to see what happens. Anything is possible. 
I think my preferred scenario for tomorrow is this overnight strength just fades. We open up to a gap down tomorrow. Everyone panics. And then some big dip buyers, you know, come in and sort of save the day. I think that's like the ideal scenario because once a lot of players get on their back foot, what happens is you know that as the market goes lower, there's going to be more and more liquidity because, you know, as it goes lower, more and more players get stopped out. So I think that's why a lot of times these bottoms, they do tend to be processes. They do tend to be longer than anyone would like them to be. So for instance, let's look at this prior bottom over here and just check this out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit if I can. Okay, let me back out. Let's take a look. Where was this? Sorry about that. Over here. Yeah, so take a look at this. We had a plunge down, then we rebounded, then another plunge down. And usually when you get this pattern, huge red candle, green candle, huge red candle, that's like the ultimate demoralizing sequence for most longs. And then the following day was, you know, a nice up day. So we'll have to see if we get some follow through tomorrow to the upside. Yeah, I think if we got a gap down, I'd actually prefer that. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. And you will see we are trading, you know, below this weekly value where we already hit this S1 pivot. And it looks like we're finding some buyers here, but again, this is pretty, you know, just for a couple of hours, we've been consolidating over here. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ looks more intact than the S&P 500 for sure. Uh, we got to take a look at the yield curve as well, because what we're seeing here is very interesting. So Powell came out today and he said, you know, we might have to speed up the taper because inflation's going out of control. So speeding up the taper, that would likely also mean speeding up rate hikes. But what's interesting is ever since the Omicron variant was announced, these treasuries have been very buoyant. So the initial concern was this red line, like, oh my gosh, these 10 year treasury futures are breaking to the downside. That means yields are breaking to the upside. And we actually had a legitimate breakdown. And then conveniently, the Omicron variant was announced. It's all a scam. No, I have no idea. We'll have to see. I mean, I am starting to get a little bit more jaded because this Omicron variant just seems like so odd. I don't really know, but we'll have to see. I don't know. Who who really knows with this stuff? I'll just comply with the, uh, with the rules and just get on with my life. But here we have these uh, 10 year treasury futures and they're inside of this monthly value right? So it's not like they're, you know, breaking down to the downside anymore. So from that perspective, you know, that's something good for the market. Uh, we have crude oil, which this was another big inflationary concern. Oh my gosh, crude oil. Look at the path it was on. This thing is a freight train. Is it going to get to a hundred bucks a barrel? Oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Now we had a complete breakdown in crude. So I think these crude prices are a lot more palatable and I think they'll really help that inflation outlook. So to be honest, you know, I'm no economist. But I think right now this could be like peak inflation fears. We'll have to see though. And then the Russell 2000, Russell up in the after hours, you can see the Russell also, you know, held pretty much this November bottom of value today. It had every reason to just slip into the abyss. This thing looked awful. So yeah, I think this is a pretty logical place to find support. But yeah, we're well below this monthly value area. And then the Dow Jones, uh, this thing is just such a laggard, not even really even worth going through. So those are our headline indices. Let's just take a quick look under the hood of the sectors. Let's see what did well, what did poorly, etc. So we can see biotech was up. That was the only green sector. And what got hit? So home builders had been very strong and they got hit. So I think that's a good sign of things starting to wash out where you see the areas of the market everyone was hiding in starting to also get hit. Semiconductors have been a great performer on the month, also got hit. Retail, uh, area everyone was hiding out in. Utilities even got hit. Solar stocks down 3%. See a carnage pretty much everywhere. Um, and then style factors, let's see what really got hit. Minval was down 2.13%. 
defenses were down 2.45 percent momentum was down two and a half percent so yeah nothing was spared today even those areas people typically go in when the market's selling off like minval and defensives those got taken out too so i think that's overall a good thing yeah we have the trend you know really pointing down now let's take a look at our options order flow we'll also take a look at some of my trades for today so let's check it out i'll go through my trades real quick so on the common stock side i did get long some global e small position just because the market's very weak but i did want to try some things to the long side given where the vix is so in a market like this it's super important to be either one staying out of the way or buying the dips and selling the rips so today i did buy the dip in a few things what i liked is hey the vix uh closed at a lower high from where it was on friday so hey that's you know you can view that as glass half full um but still very elevated closed at a 27 spot 19 so the way i see this is hey you know if the vix is going to go up more that basically means the market's crashing could the market crash it absolutely could but the vix is very elevated the market has to continue to really accelerate to the downside for the vix to sustain these levels could certainly happen but yeah you know, i like the risk reward you know better here than i did yesterday yesterday i did, barely did any trading at all um, so i got long global e let's take a look at that one for 6402 and global e broke out today there were some stocks showing relative strength so global e was one of them i think if the market resolves to the upside global e is a really good long candidate uh xbev is another one i'm currently long via calls this is a chinese automaker and chinese stocks have just been in a terrible downtrend and this one's nearing the prior highs so xbev is another really good relative strength name and you can see this k-web you know pulling down to the s1 pivot another theme i'm noticing uh this metaverse theme is still intact so roblox still looking good down 2.52 percent matterport which is really the talk of the town yesterday only down 2.03 percent doesn't look like a crazy amount of selling there uh see so yeah, i got long global e and then also um let's see i bought oh yeah some more ethereum I took a small little position in ethereum uh, i have a really big position that i added way lower um in ethereum check this out it's just like pumping in the after hours so it was announced that twitter is going to allow people to tip in ethereum which i think is awesome and yeah ethereum's looking very strong i think if we break this downtrend in equities I think crypto is likely going to lead us into your end. We'll have to see what happens though. Because one of two things is going to happen. Either cryptos are going to catch down or equities are going to catch up. Right now, I think equities, at least from these levels, it seems like they're likely to catch up. Well, we'll have to see. Um, and then what else? So did those on the common stock side. And then on the option side, I stopped out on my Twitter calls. Uh, for 289 I paid 515 and I just said weak stock and a weak tape is not a good combo. So I, I got along this one a couple days ago. Thought, hey, maybe with that new CEO, things will turn around. This really just got washed out. And it really just goes to show stick with the relative strength names. You know, that's something I want to make sure I do a better job of in 2022. When I look at, you know, the trades I've done really well in, pretty much always trading names that are above all the key moving averages they're relatively strong and all that good stuff most of my losing trades from 2022 are going after laggards that sort of thing uh, and just not being comfortable missing the first part of the move as a trader gets super comfortable with missing the first part of the move never really like, oh, go i gotta catch the bottom there will always be someone who did catch the bottom and they'll be the first ones to tell you like Oh, you're getting in at this price i got in for 20 percent cheaper or whatever it might be don't worry about that first 10 to 20 percent so like twitter for instance you could try to bottom fish it here at like 44 bucks and then when it inevitably does or you know if it does cross above the 20 day that's at like 50 bucks that's what like a 10 15 percent increase from here 
you know, at that point, a bunch of traders will get in. The first 10 to 15 percent is not going to matter because there were people trying to catch the bottom in Twitter over here up at 54 bucks. And now they're sitting on, you know, a 20 percent loss. So that's the thing. Trying to catch the bottom, you know, it feels good like you want to do it, but it's never worth it because, you know, you're taking a big risk buying stocks that have no momentum, especially into your end. But yeah, that's uh, Twitter. And then what did I also do? Uh, I got long some UVXY puts. So effectively went short vol. And I just did that. I bought the puts. It's not like I like sold calls in it or anything. So I'm size for max loss. Uh, one star position for me. And then I got long the Apple June 22nd. This was actually the June 17th. I corrected it since. Uh, 2022 140 strike calls for 29.95. I just put here the relative strength here doesn't lie. I'm going with a high delta options contract because I don't care to go for something explosive in a weak tape like this. Uh, Apple. I think there's so many reasons to really be bullish on this name here. And it's one thing to go by the chart, but I also think there's just like a lot of catalysts behind this name. Not catalysts, just like tailwinds. So one is the chart looks amazing. It's showing relative strength, which is really what we want. The chart and the supply and demand is the most important, but there's some other factors. So Apple, now they're talking about, oh, we're going to get into augmented reality headsets. Now they're sort of in that metaverse basket, metaverse conversation, etc., expanding to new business lines. They're also inserting themselves into the EV market with their autonomous vehicles. So those are two of the most dominant themes in the market right now. And Apple can say, hey, we're at the center of both of those. And the other thing is, Apple, has it been a crazy outperformer? No, it really hasn't. It's really been in line with the SPY. I think after today's action, it might be outperforming the SPY. Let's see, this one's up 24% year to date. And this one's up 21%, almost 22%. So basically in line after today's action, pulled ahead. But up until then, it's been underperforming. It trades at only 7.29 times sales. Pretty crazy. Uh, it pays a dividend. It does a buyback, you know, a share buyback. So this name, when everyone's worried about like, oh, the Fed's going to pull back stimulus, investors are going to naturally gravitate to companies that are growing, produce solid cash flows, companies that do buybacks, companies that are liquid. Liquid companies are super important. And Apple trades, you know, the volume is 170, average volume is 79 million shares traded a day. So very liquid stock. So I just think it's defensive and it's showing relative strength. It's got all these different things going for it. And there's like some call options with like the uh, the AR and the EVs, etc. So yeah, I got long Apple. And my game plan is, hey, let's say 2022 is kind of like a sideways year or like a volatile year. Market's not really doing all that well. Uh, I think Apple's gonna continue to outperform just for those reasons that I laid out. Could Apple get up to 200 bucks? Absolutely, I really think it can. It's only at seven times sales. <laughs> so yeah, like for instance, a lot of these other fang names, uh, like Google for instance, this one is at 8.88 .88 times sales. We have Nvidia, which has been the darling this year, at 32 times sales. Facebook, this one's taking a huge haircut. This one's now at 7.88 times sales. So these are the names really that, you know, it's like they're great companies, they're growing, and they're also trading at, you know, decent valuations. So I think these guys, I think there's a reason why the NASDAQ has been outperforming. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and let's take a quick look. It's gonna be a little bit of a longer video, but I just think there's a lot going on today to go over. Let's take a look at our options order flow. And we'll go first to our options races, today's combined flows. And let's see what we got today, what we're players positioning in. Wow, Goldman Sachs, what the F? Goldman Sachs, 
took the lead from Tesla temporarily during the day. What the heck was that? And Home Depot. Wow, so we're seeing some new names that we don't typically see on here. Qualcomm as well. Let's check that out. I always love when there's new names. Goldman Sachs. This one's looks like it's coming in to support. <clears throat> see, good old GS. Yeah, so it's coming into that 200 day moving average. Let's see what else we got here. It doesn't really look all that interesting. We got Home Depot. Let's check it out on the on the Tradescape. Wow, all calls for Home Depot. January 300s, January 280s, January 270s, January 250s, January 275. Dang, we got everything. Everyone was just getting bold to the max in Home Depot. Wow, and Home Depot has a great chart too. This thing looks awesome. This is definitely one to watch as well. Let's see, Qualcomm also only calls for January. 90s, 85s, 130s, 100s. Yeah, Qualcomm also has a great chart. So yeah, definitely worth noting those two names. Apple, of course, ton of flow coming down for December, uh, December 31st. There's a lot, a lot of them look short term. It looks like they might be trying to like gamma squeeze Apple January 2022. Take a look at the VIX. We got some big VIX calls going up. 26 strike that expired December 22nd. 30 strike expiring December 22nd. Oh my gosh. February 26 strike, December 35 strike, man. So I think it's a good thing everyone's getting protected, but yeah, it's kind of spooky. And we got the Pfizer Uber, let's check it out. Uber, very mixed bag. Let's see how Uber's doing. I think at some point we'll get a really nice buy the dip opportunity in a lot of these uh, travel stocks that are getting killed by Omicron. But yeah, that's our options order flow for today. And that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all have a good rest of your night and I will see you all tomorrow.